I worked for uh, in New Zealand conducting the symphonies in the different cities. But now, after all these years, we go overseas for five months at least every year, and I work in California, in Canada, in the in the Prague, in Munich. We work in China too, but we don't get paid for that. This is my certificate. They made me a professor of music at Chongchun University in China because I lecture there every time we go to China. Even at my age with all this gray hair, I'm still working flat out all over the world. Enoch Alinya had come over to do some very special meetings. Mm. He is a very special person for the Baha'is because he has a rank that is called the Hand of the Cause, and these are very special, I would say, spiritual people. And uh, they travel mostly all around the world and encourage the Baha'is, and uh, uh, well, they're marvelous individuals. Enoch just glowed Glow. with love for all people. When we were in Suva, and uh, he was speaking at a, a meeting that was scheduled in a little village just outside Suva. And we had rented this very big hall, and uh, as we arrived, the room was just packed with people. And all Enoch did was just walk into the room, and he smiled. He never said a word. And the next thing we knew, the people just stood up like they were one body, and they went wild. They screamed, and they shouted, and they cheered, and we just couldn't believe it. I actually found I had tears running down my face. It was, I'm even moved now. It was such a moving experience. So we think of him in a very special way. We offered to take him from Nandi up to Lautoka in, on, our, sail in our sailboat. And so once Russell got it out of, you know, the, into the open water, he said to, uh, Enoch Olenge, he said, would you like to take the wheel? And Enoch said, oh, would I? <laughs> and so he took the helm and he sailed her all the way into uh, Lautoka. Lautoka. It was a beautiful day with smooth water and nice light breeze and we had Perfect. several Fijians aboard. They were playing their guitars and singing. We started to sing. Enakalinga, 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 the hand of the cause. They, they were so overjoyed to see him, and he was so overjoyed, he had tears in his eyes, too. We are remembering the words of Baha'u'llah himself. He said that the city is the home of the body, but the country is the home of the soul. I can't put it in words. But I always feel entirely at home with indigenous people. And I've met them all over the world, from the Eskimos to the um, uh, Indians in the jungles of South America and so on. And I have a great love for them. Well, Ruhia Kano needed a rest. The last day she was there, she insisted, I want to go for a sail in Dawnbreaker, our sailboat. And I said, the wind was blowing, the waves were six foot high and, and rough choppy and I said I wouldn't normally go out on a day like this you know she said oh I must sail on the dawnbreaker so we took her out so we're sailing we got up just a jib in the mizzen not the mainsail and we're sailing along in this rough weather and all of a sudden the jib rips the stitching ripped the whole uh, width of the sail so I said, Gina, turn into the wind, and I had to go forward to uh, get the get sail, the sail down. down. So I'm up there starting to work, and I turn around, and here's Ruhia Kanu 
coming up the deck to come out to help me. Now this could be so dangerous, this boom can swing across and knock someone in the water. <coughs> and I said, you get back in that cockpit right now. <laughs> I'm telling a hand of the cause off. And she did, because I could imagine us having a hand of the cause in the water and trying to get her out in this rough water. It would have been very difficult. It, it very could have been a terrible situation. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm the only person that's told a hand of the cause <laughs> what to do. <laughs>